I work on exoplanets and the search for life beyond Earth. All right. And are we alone? Well, that is not a very scientific question to start with. Why is that? <laughs> because we really have no idea. We really don't know at all. But we do... You know, wait, wait, just because well, we don't know doesn't mean it's not scientific. No. It's because the biologists don't like that. Well, I'll just... Okay. The biologists hate it when astronomers say, yes, I believe there is definitely life out there. Yes. As an astronomer, and thinking about the math and the numbers and the hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy and the hundreds of billions of galaxies out there, I'm convinced there must be life somewhere. You know, everywhere. Oh, but wait a minute. But yeah. that argument, I've, that's the, about 90% of astronomers, 80% of astronomers. Right. And the that. biologists hate that argument. Well, they hate it because you're talking about you're multiplying one number, it's a big number, times a number you don't know, and then saying it's large. Exactly. So, exactly. so let's, we, well, you don't do that then. I do have a little more thought behind it, but it's not as scientific or quantitative as we'd like. What we do know for sure now is that there are exoplanets, planets orbiting stars other than the sun. We know that rocky planets, based on their mass and size and average density, are very common. And we know that planets, all kinds of planets, appear to be in their star's habitable zone. We also know that wherever we look, the ingredients for life, at least, the very basic building blocks, are common. They want to form. When we look and we see organics in the interstellar medium, you know, we look on planets in our own solar system, and although they don't have life as we know it yet, we do see the building blocks for life. And so we put all that together. And I'm sure even though it will not satisfy the biologists, it just gives us more hope that there is life out there somewhere. At least there's a home for life. There's chance for life to so arise. The ingredients are there, but maybe not the recipe. <laughs> yeah, well, that just depends, actually. I don't know. In the question, are we alone, when you ask yourself that, what does we mean for you? Are we alone? It means, is our planet Earth alone? It doesn't mean we humans as intelligent beings. It just means any life form at all. But so you're, we, but you're well aware that most of the public are more interested in we. I know in, they human, are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But that's not what you're... Well, we're all interested in that. I would love to meet an alien. There's just no question. But I think we have to start somewhere. Okay. And what we do try to, we meaning probably you and I and all the astronomers out there, we try to convince the public that you know, we're taking the first steps. Rocky planets, planets with water gases that don't belong that may signify life on the planet and we kind of will go down those steps and maybe eventually we'll find out what kind of life it is well i i wrote an, an article a couple of years ago saying we have not found et or have we and the whole idea was that we don't know what life really is and so we're free therefore to say that maybe far from equilibrium dissipative systems are life and if that's the case then we've already found hurricanes on jupiter for example so what 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 do you think of that semantic view of we really don't know what life is therefore how can we look for it or I do. maybe we've already found yeah. it i i agree with the thing we don't know what life is in my view though i do take a more conservative approach and that assume that some type of life will use chemistry like we do to extract energy and store energy and release energy to function chemical energy chemical energy not right. pressure and density energy gradients like I mean, you I have a hurricane it may be possible Maybe possible. But I just think I don't know how we get our heads around it. I mean, I hear the argument that other things might be out there. Sometimes we think maybe life uses mechanical energy, like a windmill. Well, phys <laughs> physicists can easily get their head around. There's a free energy gradient and uh, either density or pressure or concentrations, and therefore any st far from equilibrium dissipated structure that extracts that energy, undoes the gradient, you could in some loose sense call life. But you're not going to go there. Well... I'm not not going to go there. Okay. But I'm, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> no, let me let's just take that a little further because we just don't see it on Earth. Actually, that's mm -hmm. very Terra centric, you know. But did you know there there is life in like ocean currents? They're not extracting the gradient, the mechanical energy gradient. They're actually just waiting for food to flow by, mm -hmm. and through them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting concept. What, in that concept, though, the thing I do wonder is how will they store and release energy rather than use it continuously? Right, right. So it's like are, our car and our engine. Right, it's not right. going to blow so up. How do you we store energy? It. Right. Yeah. So, so, so based on those, I mean, I've been led to the idea that uh, maybe the idea of storing energy is much more important than either having a bag or having information, but storage of energy so that you can use that to, I don't know, find some more, I guess. And now you talked about TESS and the James Webb Space Telescope, and then you said the next generation would be humongous ground-based telescopes, and that, I guess, on the time scale of 20 to 50 years. Well, maybe sooner, right? Because they're being built now. They've well, I'm not, interested in 100 yeah. to 1,000 oh, to 10,000. We haven't talked years. about the star shape yet. Oh, no, we did talk about star A shape, little right. bit, but I'm so interested about, in much further into the future, right. like your grandchildren. What, yeah. if, they, if they're interested in the question you're interested in, what do you think they'll be doing? Well, I think we don't know yet. And I think that what we're starting to see here in engineering is we're reaching our limits. I mean, we're going to build a 30-meter telescope. We might be able to build a 100-meter telescope on the ground. 
How about, oh. a, how about a moon, far side moon? Well, let's finish with Earth, though. But I think beyond that, we're going to have to do something completely different. We can build things and stow them in rockets and launch them and deploy them. But honestly, beyond that, they're going to have to build in space or fabricate in space, send up raw materials and print out parts. Mm -hmm. Now, the far side of the moon, you know, that's, I think, a bit of an, um, a misconception. It's got a lot of dust. People hate dust. You know, all that stuff on the ground, the mm -hmm. regolith. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're gaining anything from by going on the dark side of the moon. You have to land and assemble. I think space is where it's at. Really? Huh. And think about this for a second. There's this one company, I think it's even called Spider. And they're literally trying to be a spider in space and mm -hmm. to generate, you know, take up raw things and generate material and build large structures. So I think whatever they're going to do in the future, I don't think we know yet. 